Hello, welcome to Uncle Cthulhu Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a video about black powder. Certainly in the run up to the great game, hopefully you've seen some of the videos. And afterwards, we've been playing a lot of black powder in our gaming group. Napoleonics have really taken off, so we've had a few games of those. And I'd like to share some thoughts about how you can get the best out your games of black powder in your house. So I've called this video a question of scale. And the reason why I talk about that is black powder is written to be played on big sweeping tables, big sweeping movements. And certainly the great game was a great example of that. The table space and the maneuver space was massive and black powder I felt worked really well. However, unlike the authors like Rick Priestley, uh, the Perry Twins you see there, Game in Rome, uh, John Stollard, they've got amazing gaming spaces available in their houses the average war game as, as I've just said doesn't have that certainly I can only use a 6x4 table and that goes on my dining room table which is about 5, five and a half foot, three and a half foot so I've got 3 2 by 4 pieces of MDF to go together put my cloths on and play the game on the table so the issue becomes then to get the best out of black powder for my facilities is we're going to have to make some changes. Otherwise, if we've got 12 inch deployment zone, my units are two bounds away from the enemy. It just all happens too quick. So we've got to change some stuff to be able to get the best out of black powder. And actually, the thing that prompted this is the black powder two wheel book talks about making changes but the Black Powder 1 rule book had some really good appendices at the back which actually give you some details about that. So if you're new to, to Black Powder, you've just moved into it, say from uh, another game system or you've seen the Waterloo starter set and you, you've picked that up, then you might try having those games on your tabletop and be really taken aback by what's going on and how quickly things are developing. So what we did was change a few things to make Black Powder scale to our six by four dining room tables so the first one was ground scale so it's a really simple solution i think we reduced all measurements by a third so musket range instead of being 18 inches reduced to 12 inches uh, one march one movement so for infantry instead of 12 inches became eight and everything else scaled down from uh, the leadership zones everything they would, every time there was a measurement we scaled it down using the same and it was a simple fix for the tabletop and worked quite well. However, the other thing we thought about was in black powder, battalions, if you're using the rules as written, basically we're looking at Napoleonics, is our, our main thing for black powder at the moment, is your battalions are formed of six bases of four models. And that's a 40 mil square base. So if you deploy in line as written, six bases in line, that's 24 centimetres, that's almost a foot. So on your six foot table, you've basically got six battalions of British line. Takes a whole table. So what you're going to lack there is manoeuvre, flanks. It becomes a very tactical game. A French columns come against British line. But you don't really get a sense of a Napoleonic battle and it's all its uh, myriad of uh, nuances. Certainly we've found the probably optimum the size of points that you want for a 6x4 game. I'm going to be doing another video on, on how to fight a, a battle of black powder and what will work for you. Is 600 points. And 600 points will get you about 12 units on the tabletop. I think my, my French 600 points was 3 brigades of 3 line. Each one being a regiment. There was uh, 2 guns. Two units of Chasseur, Le Chevalier, and Horse Artillery. Another game, I got rid of the Horse Artillery and used two units of Carassiers that I'd painted and hadn't used. So, like I say, then you've got so six British battalions in line, ready to fire. That's basically your entire. There's no flanks, anything like that. So, we thought about changing the way formations are made. So it's not taking quite as much space as that. Certainly Albion Triumphant talks about four, four men deep and ranking up differently. But this is making it a permanent 
thing. So, so far we've experimented with your line being three bases by two. And it's attack column still two by three bases. The other thing we've done is four for a line, and, and line tends to be the, the, the difficulty, four bases with two sat back in the middle, or, or they're the ones that go forward as skirmishes. And the reason why we've kept it at 24 men battalions there is we felt it looks better. And certainly some of our people in our gaming group want, was quite keen to keep it at 24 men battalions. So this was our way to look at how we could keep our 24 men battalions, but change it up so we've got a bit more space on the width of the battlefield. Certainly the manoeuvre distance being shortened by two thirds changes the depth of the battlefield. But also we were quite keen of width and how we can use that to turn flanks, etc. So the advantage of it is it keeps your battalions on the tabletop, lots of models on the table. Disadvantage, especially if you go three by two, a line doesn't quite look like a line. However, I think you do get used to it. So the last game we played was that four, four men, four wide with two in the middle. That felt and looked a bit more like a line. Certainly, that would be that's the one I'm I'm going to look at moving forward. And especially with the rules being, you can only engage one one unit per flank. What we were finding was if you've got six bases wide and a French top column comes in there, well, there's a lot of space and it just felt odd that that wasn't getting engaged. So if you shorten the line a wee bit, then it doesn't look, it doesn't feel as bad. But, so that was a solution that we had based on the amount of models for the table. Another would be to change the amount of models or stands in a unit. Now, black powder is abstract, and like it says, the first edition actually has the appendix, and I think it's appendix, appendix number one, which is about changing base and unit size. And like I say, it's 24 men battalions on four bases, so Warlord Games can sell you that box, and you know you're buying a full battalion. But we're War Games, if we could change things up, if we want to and as long as you can form the formations with the stands you could theoretically use significantly less and actually if you use an odd number of bases if you're forming lines that also puts your color party in the center of the line i know it's a it's a minor thing but when you got your two flags for the british it's always off center um, which is a very minor thing but then again in the salt columns how you line up your French command kind of sometimes will put a flag on the wrong side, but hey ho. The other, so what would that potentially look like? So, me and Martin are planning, Martin's doing the Polonic Russian army, and I, I've, I've done my armies primarily for the pe peninsula, but I'm also looking at doing a retreat from Russia. The Perry retreat from Russia models are superb. I think the dismounted cavalry. So a skirmishing set has two of my favourite models that's ever been sculpted in 20. You know that there's a dragoon with the two pistols and there's the, um, I think it's all guard chasseur with the big furry hat and the sword. and Yeah, lovely models. But anyway, so our plan for that is, because the armies are going to be ragged, there's going to be all sorts of different size troops as a battalions have been worn down on the retreat and we want the tabletop to be about manoeuvre is we're going to say our standard battalion is three bases a small battalion is two tiny battalions one as normal so that would primarily be for the french and for the russians we'll make uh they'll be able to field large battalions and four four bases will be large large battalions and again the advantage of that is it's it, the, the changes to measurement gives us depth of the battlefield to play around with, whereas the changes to unit formation gives us width of the battlefield. So we're going to be able to manoeuvre more and, and turn flanks and see things, and there'll be a handful of ragged French battalions that are, I suppose, facing off against their Russian large Russian battalions rolling in. The other advantage of this is you... Because you're going to be fielding less models, you could potentially field bigger armies. Like I said before, we found 600 points at its normal 24-man battalions is what fills our six-foot table. 
but this will allow you to maybe feel bigger formations, more brigades, etc. Uh, it also potentially will cost less. You know, it's, it's probably going to be about half the half the amount of money to, to field an army. So that's what you can do by keeping it at 28 mil, changing the figures. Because I've, I've got Waterloo in 6 mil. I've got a vast 6 mil set of armies. And I love the look and scale and size of a 6 mil battle. But there is a joy to paint 28 millimeter battalions and, and uniforms. And you can get much more into the uniforms and research and stuff. But then, if you want to do black powder and you've got a smaller size that so you want to take advantage of, you could always reduce the scale of the figures. I would say 15 millimeter figures, you could just half the distances, still working in inches. 10 mil, 6 mil, working centimeters. Certainly, I says before, my sort of um, pals who occasionally game, I tend to do both sides in a, in a conflict, so I'm able to host games. And I've got a couple of more casual pals that do board games and card games in the village don't really do miniature games so if we're using black powder across in napoleonics and american civil war and all we've done is change their scale scaling for it then it's a set of rules that if they're only playing a war game every two to three months they can come in they can understand be it american civil war or napoleonics with a bit of flavor in there with the rules characteristics they can pick it up and play it so yeah just change 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 use smaller smaller models and like I say, it's, it's about being able to play around with width as well as depth of your battlefield. So you can turn flanks, certainly with the 28 mil 600 point battles, it felt very tactic. It felt like a very tactical game, but not a very strategic game. And by that I meant the British had formed their basically three, three battalions with some cavalry in support, French columns coming on, it was how they handled that, how they get the best out of the approach, the attack stacked up their support bonuses, how the British could deal with one column, swing round support for another. Very tactical, but not very strategic. Certainly when we've played 6 mil, Catabra, Ligny, Waterloo, 100 day campaign, using the smaller scale stuff, able to move vast distances, added a whole strategic element to, to games. So yeah, so it's thinking about changing the rules to get what you want out of the game, whether you want a very tactical battle, or whether you want a very strategic battle, and strategic works in bigger tables or smaller stuff being able to move around a bigger like an average size table and and ultimately for your war games nobody says you have to use black powder like say for me it's very accessible i've explained about my casual gamers uh, i think one of the things that's missing is scenarios uh, by that i mean standard open battle scenarios so if we use the Albion Triumphant books or Clash of Eagles to create our 600 point army, well, what do you do with it? I've got, I've got plans for a like a, a set of a set of random scenario, a deck of cards which create scenario from set up, maybe some twists, special rules, etc. So I'm, I'm going to be playing around with that. But it, it is widely followed, and actually it's, it's a fun game. It's not too taxing. You don't have a lot of off-table record keeping. Certainly we create counters. We create counters for everything that we need to track and follow on, on, on the field. It looks very pleasing. And, yeah, you can, once, you, once you've got a handle on black powder, pretty much the, from the top of the country to the bottom of the country, you'll be able to go in and find people who are able to play black powder with you. So... Hopefully that's been useful to you. So I talked about question of scale. I've talked about reducing the table sizes. And like I say, a lot of this was in Black Powder 1, but it's only really covered by Black Powder 2 in paragraphs. And some people don't like playing around with the rules, think you should use the rules as written. I'll just, and close and read you the important principle, page 27, Black Powder 2. Battles with model soldiers are supposed to be enjoyable affairs. All questions of victory and defeat pale as to nothing before this objective. Our rules of play have been formulated for our own games and our aim is purely to explain, entertain and hopefully inspire other enthusiasts. We may not pretend that our game is superior to others and invite the reader to adapt whatever portions of the game suit their purpose. Different players inevitably find interest and satisfaction in different things, so there's plenty 
to begin by amending or otherwise improving rules that fail to meet with your general approval. So yeah, feel free to change it up the way you want. So I've been Uncle Cthulhu. Thanks for watching this. If you've got any other thoughts on how you change the scaling on Black Powder to suit your gaming group or in fact change some rules, I'd love to hear from it. I hope you're having a great time hobbying at the moment. I know I certainly am. I've got Polish Vistula Legion I'm building a paint at the moment. You might see my unboxing video before as well. So you have a great one and that's goodbye from me.